Hey guys, Michael here. So I want to talk about something um, that a lot of people probably don't use in their day to day lives anymore, but I use a lot. And I have one sitting right here, a typewriter. Um, I have a Mac, I have an iPad, uh, I have other digital devices, um, yet I type on this thing. Why? Today I kind of want to talk about a few of the reasons I prefer to use a typewriter to write personally. Um, this is how I go about my own creative and fiction writing. Um, I have a few reasons behind it, and since some of you have, may have never used a typewriter, we could dive in and take a look. Um, so we'll bring the camera closer uh, and get a close-up look of this typewriter right here, and I'll give you a little bit more details on my personal machine and why I use it um, over other machines. So let's talk. This is a typewriter. Here, I'll lift it up. Let's take a look at it. It's heavy. There we go. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? So this is actually a custom design. I designed it myself. That will be a topic for another day. Um, my typewriter designs. Um, or at least typewriter paintings. So this is a Red Smith Corona from 1959. Um, so I custom painted this myself. Um, typewriters mean a lot to me. Um, to me, using a typewriter or using a word processor on your computer um, is the same as any artist picking what brush or what pen um, or what type of clay to work with. Um, it's just how we interact um, and create our media. Um, few reasons. Few reasons that I will go ahead and use a typewriter. One, it's distraction free. For some people, this may sound like a poor excuse. Oh, just close Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. If you're on a Mac, um, a great example is you can just turn on Do Not Disturb and you won't get any notifications. However, with a typewriter, for me at least, it has truly been the best for limiting distractions um, because there are none. I'm not trying to suppress distractions, um, which take a level of effort in their own when you're actively trying not to pay attention and be distracted by something. Um, this typewriter, I'm not distracted. Um, and it's also created a purpose instrument for me to use. And when I sit down at this typewriter, I instantly am in the zone to write. In a similar field, or, or sorry, in a different field, Experts will tell people who want to learn to get to sleep better um, that if they just associate their bed with sleep, um, when they lie down in that bed, they'll fall asleep. More if they, you know, stay away from other activities. Um, with this machine right here, I know when I sit down, it's time to write. When I sit down at my computer, there's options to do so many things. So foremost, there's no distractions. It's a purpose-built instrument that I have mentally kind of gotten myself in the zone to realize that when I sit here, this is the task I'm working on. This is what I'm doing. Another reason I like to use the typewriter is because of editing. So one of my issues when I write is I keep going back and editing stuff that I've written. So I almost stop, I don't move forward in a sense. Uh, I keep reading uh, previous lines and previous sentences and I'm finagling with little details and it's holding me back. Um, and with a typewriter, you don't have that ability to easily erase content. It's really taught me to just move forward and work on my story and I'll come back later for those details. Most important thing is to get that storyline out first. This has really helped with that. No matter how I write, um, I just keep going. I just keep moving forward. I don't spend time going back and editing. Um, there we go. So one, distraction free. Two, it helps me personally with uh, to resist going back and editing. Hell, it makes it almost impossible uh, unless you want to dig out. I actually have white out here, <laughs> which I'm not going to keep pulling out when I'm writing. Um, that's another reason for it. Some other byproducts, so not necessarily um, required, but some things that are pretty nice. 
um, is paper. I forgot, I read on a Kindle, um, and I like reading on a Kindle, but when you're working on something, there's something nice, look at that nice stack of paper. You see that? There's something nice about having a thick stack of paper that just, ah, oh God, look at that, I feel like I got work done. And this is, this is all typed, this is all typewriter, you know, gone through, and you can see there's uh, edits on here, too. So I've written this in, in pen and crossed things out. Um, this being able to interact with it, I, I can really see my progress. Um, and it's really exciting, because it's something we don't see anymore. Um, I discussed in my last video kind of my own workflow. Uh, so I'll sit down, I will work on this machine for a, a while. Um, I will write outlines on here first. I'll spend a month doing outlines. I will then transition to writing um, chapters on here. So here is, uh, let's see, this is the novel manuscript. So this is the first, uh, I believe this is the first seven chapters of my novel. Um, and that's it, you know. After I have written it out, I will sometimes go over it with red pen um, to kind of make some adjustments. And then I will transition it to a computer. So one thing that people will say is, well, if you just write it on the computer, you don't have to transition it to a computer, so you're wasting time. It forces you to go over what you've written. When you're writing, and when I'm writing, you need to keep reading, keep going over the material that you are working with. By typing it out and then being forced to retype it on a computer, I am forcing myself to go over that content, view it a second time, let it run through sentence by sentence, letter by letter, and determine if everything sounds right to me. If you have everything on the computer itself, yes, you can definitely do that. You can discipline yourself to really read through it, but a lot of us are just gonna skim through it. Being forced to literally copy over is such an interesting feeling. It just, you're really touching back on the novel and you're forcing yourself to transition through and edit it line by line, word by word. Um, so that's what I have to say for that. Um, any other notes that I wanna note? I mean, I have some cool things. I love the machines themselves. Um, that's definitely there. Um, there's a lot of different machines to pick from. Not gonna go into that right now, but yes, I have a personal like for the sound that these make. Uh, when typing, I do like moving this across and hearing the bell and um, there's kind of a flow it puts me in. So I do like it and I find fascination with the machines to begin with. But that is in essence why I type on a typewriter. It's distraction free. Um, it allows me to really move forward and it stops me from going back and keep making edits. Um, it forces me to go over everything when I transfer it to a computer to really reread it, recalculate it. It shows me physical progress that I'm making. And it's a device that puts me in the zone. When I sit down to it, my brain knows what's happening. We're writing. And humans are such simple, <laughs> in a sense they're so complicated, but we're so simple that we can program ourselves like any other animal um, where when we we can recognize something to put us, our, us in a certain mental state. And that's what this typewriter does. So um, that's about it. If you want to stick around, I'm going to show you a closer look at this typewriter. Um, I'll show you eh, just how you, I load paper in it and how I get writing. And that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. This is my second video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to kind of have this journal as I move through on my personal progress. Um, oh, I should probably note how far I've come just to kind of give myself uh, accountability with these videos. Uh, so since the last video, I have written two chapters. Um, I have written two chapters and I'm working on the third. So and when I say I've written two chapters, I don't mean uh, I've written chapter five and six and I'm working on chapter seven. So um, see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. See ya or stay tuned for looking at that machine.
All right, so if you're sticking around, you want to see a closer look at the machine I use. This is a Smith Corona Sterling. Um, this machine itself is from 1959, and I'm able to determine that exact year by opening it up and checking out that serial number. So when I originally found this machine, it was in a pretty uh, drab color. It was in a sort of 50s olive green sadness sort of thing going on. Um, and I really liked how it writes. It, it writes very well. Um, so I ended up painting it red. Um, and since then, I've actually been converting a lot of different typewriters, and I will be selling them. But that is, like I said, a, cat, a topic for another video. I have a, uh, what do I work on now? It's an Olivetti Lettera. It's going to be a beautiful yellow typewriter. So I'll show that off, off at some point. But just to show you, if you've never seen a typewriter, very simple. So up here we have what's called the carriage. Um, the carriage moves back and forth. So we can release, uh, we can move the carriage across using this lever. Um, there are two carriage release buttons on each side. That's actually not the carriage release. Sorry, it's hard to see. Uh, this carriage release button here and here. And basically when I hold these buttons, I can move the carriage back and forth however I like between the margins I set. And you can see the margins are up here um, on this typewriter. Oops, sorry. Doing this one-handed, guys, you can push down and move the margin wherever you like. So I have my margins set uh, how they will appear on the paper. This is the platen, so this is what the, the paper feeds in here. I'll show you what that's like. And this is the paper bale, which keeps the paper flat down while typing. Um, I absolutely love this machine. This is my favorite machine I've ever had. Um, here's our key layout here. We're not going to call it a keyboard, but it is QWERTY. Um, some things are a little different. The apostrophe is above the 8 key, which actually cons consistently confuses me when I switch between my Mac keyboard and this keyboard because they are in different spots. Um, but you got, you know, normal keyboard. Got your space. You can see that space is it. Uh, we have shift, shift, uh, shift lock or caps lock. Backspace is up here. Uh, it's weird. It's on the left on this machine, which is a little odd. You see some keys, which we really don't see on uh, modern machines these days, like a dedicated one-fourth and half key, uh, a tab button, uh, margin release. So if I if I start writing and I get up to that margin and I want to keep writing past it, I can tap that key once, and that will allow me to do so. This is a ribbon color selector, so if I have different color ribbons, um, I can go ahead and switch between them, usually like red and red and black. This ribbon is just a completely black ribbon, as you can see. Um, and then this button over here reverses the direction of the ribbons. So if you don't already know, I'm going to open this lid, which makes it a little easier to see. Um, this is the, these are what we call the slugs. So all of these slugs, as we call them, let's see if I can zoom in nicely. Um, all these slugs have different letters on them. And you see it has two letters, one on the bottom, one on the top. And when we hit the shift key, it moves the basket up and down. And that's going to determine whether the top part of the slug or the bottom uh, is going to hit our paper. So if I type the letter A, I'm going to type it in slow motion. You'll see the slug with A on it will come up. You'll see how the ribbon rises there. And then it will stamp it onto the paper. So this ribbon, which runs from here to here, uh, or if it runs out, it will then just reverse, and it can go back and forth a few times. Um, this ribbon is full of ink, and these metal slugs literally just like a stamp, stamp it onto the paper itself. So it, they're really simple how they work, these machines. All right, so I'm gonna try and load up a piece of paper. Let's do this. So over here, this is my, uh, kind of section where I try to organize some paper. I try and do this. Like I said, one-handed, I apologize. I know this is not as smooth. Da, da, da. I'm really, you know what? I can't get one. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay. So this is just like standard printer paper. Nothing special about this. I'm just gonna put it in this top slot. Normally I'd try to be a little bit more careful, but I'm doing it one-handed. Oh, might not let me. Gotta get the grip. 
Come on. There we go. Okay. So paper comes up. I'm going to pull the bell forward. Put the bell down. And that's it. So now you can see I have paper here and I can start typing. Let me try to type with one hand. Um, when we push this across, by the way, a lot of people think it just moves the carriage. Um, it actually brings us to the next line and moves the carriage. So I'm going to try. Let's try it. Uh, hello. And then to do an exclamation mark, there's no exclamation mark key. So we do a period, and we backspace, and then we do shift apostrophe. And we have an exclamation mark. Hello, everyone. And that's real ink. That's real ink on paper. You'll also notice there's a one key missing. Where is that one key? Well, guess what? It's a lowercase l. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. This is my custom Smith Corona from 1959. Uh, ended up fine. It's, it's amazing because I actually I went out. I bought a very expensive Remington typewriter uh, from the 1930s. I still have that typewriter. Spent. Um, mm, how let's say I spent three figures on it. Let's put it that way. Um, and it cost me so much money. And this one I found at a thrift store for two figures. And I ended up loving it so much and painting it and using it that my Remington no longer gets used. There you go, guys. That is a closer look at the typewriter I personally use to write all of my stuff. See you later.